since the wild card round was expanded two years ago, all eight teams that have won game one have gone on to win the series. So bad news there for the Astros, the Orioles, the Brewers, and the Braves. Not only that, Mark Zitto, but listen to this. Not only have all eight game one winners gone on to win the series, seven of them have swept. So it will be mm. interesting. History says we may not even have many game threes on Thursday. Yeah. I think it, if, in our best bet, I think we're kind of rooting for a game three. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But we start with our double play, Mets, Brewers. The Mets, fatigue. Who cares about fatigue? They go into Milwaukee, Algonquin for the good land, and take game one. Fourth consecutive time going back to last year, Mark, that the Brewers blow a multi-run lead in the playoffs. How are you handicapping game two, uh, fine sir? Well, uh, I would like to say this uh, to start here. Uh, oh. Yesterday, my my $5 play was uh, the Brewers' money line, thinking that they were going to win. Um, to the 12 poor bastards who purchased that, um, if you jump in the comments section below uh, and you leave your Venmo, I will send you $5 back. That's what I'm, I'm offering a full refund for how crappy that play was and for how awful I have been so uh, you have to be subscribed to the channel and to this show. Uh, and, and if you put your Venmo in there, I will give you $5 back. And I'm only doing it to 12 people. If you're a schmuck who wants to lie that didn't buy my package, uh, you're a schmuck. Okay? If you're doing this for $5, you're an idiot. Nonetheless, if you actually did I buy my package, I love you so much. If you're subscribed to the channel I'm, 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 and you put your Venmo down there, I'm giving you $5 back. This offer stands for 24 hours. So uh, anybody who bought my package, the 12 poor souls – that invested their hard-earned money in me, I'm giving it back to you because I suck. I mean, I literally suck as a plate. I, I, I don't think there are words. Like, literally, the worst one at Wager Talk over the past seven days. So You're uh, a good man. I, I, I get that. I may be a good man, but I'm a terrible handicapper right now. I, I, I can't. It's going to turn. It's going to turn. Oh, so in, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite. Yeah, well, th I mean, yeah, terrible person, handicapper, whatever. Same thing. It doesn't matter. Uh, nonetheless. What a weirdo, by the way. Um, is it still trash talk Tuesday? Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. It's Wednesday. Anyway, I didn't think you were a weird guy. Uh, I am, uh, I, I'm going to look at this Mets Brewers series and do the opposite of what I normally would do, uh, which is take the public bet here and play the over seven and a half. Why am I going to play the over of seven and a half? Well, first of all, Frankie Montas is starting for the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, Montas since coming over from Cincinnati, has given up at least three runs in all but two of his starts. He faced the Mets literally five days ago, only went four innings, um, walked three batters, and gave up a home run. Gave up two runs in that spot. Now, I, Milwaukee at that point in time had everything settled, so they weren't really going to push him out there. But the longer this dude pitches, the worse it's going to get. By the time he gets through the order, you know, a second and third time, guess what? It's, it's really bad. Like, he goes from a 190 batting average the first time through the order to a 276 the second time. So it'll be curious to see how much with Milwaukee, with their season on the line, how long they're going to let him go. It might only be a three-inning game for him uh, one time through the order, and that's it. But still, uh, we know how good the Mets are at hitting on the road. Um, the Mets are going to start Sean Manea, who is, of course, a human cabbage patch doll. We've talked about this before. And um, not a guy that I want to trust that much. He's also been a little bit shaky as of late. His last two starts haven't been great. In fact, three of his last five, he's given up at least three runs. Um, one of them, again, five days ago against the Brewers, where he lasted three and two-thirds and gave up six runs on seven hits and gave up a home run. But the Brewers also hit lefty pitching really, really well. Their top 10 batting average OPS and WRC plus on the season. They've also scored the third most runs in Major League Baseball this year at home against lefties. So all this adds up to me to a lot of scoring. If Frankie Montas and Sean Manea give us two gems that last five innings of, of just one run combined between both of them, I, I, I don't know what to tell you other than I am a freaking mush and you shouldn't do anything I tell you to do exactly. <laughs> do the opposite. Thank you very much. That is me, right now, the guy on the left. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. Okay? Um, and I'm, I'm losing my hair, so that works out well. Thank you very much, Joe Ranieri, for bringing Seinfeld into our lives. So my half of the double play, over seven and a half, between the Mets and the Brewers. 
Smash that like button if you are down with the over in that one. Smash that like button if you think it would be funny if Mark Zinno winds up sending $5 to at Brian Power on Venmo because I may try that later. You, you, anyway. You did not buy me a package, okay? You did not. I, <laughs> by the way, folks, we have a record of actually who bought. So if you're going to be that kind okay. of schmuck, $5, just don't do that stuff. You didn't buy the damn package. No, don't don't do that. Be a loser. Don't do that. I'm the loser. I'm the loser in this relationship, okay? Let me be the loser. You don't have to be a loser, uh, I will get to my half of the double play in a second. It's an er- it's the early game, but let me ask you a quick question. There's been a pretty significant shift in price uh, in this series here. After the Mets are now favored in game two, you know Milwaukee closed what around minus one forty in game one. I don't know if I agree yeah. with that shift. Is 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 this pitching matchup alone enough to justify that price shift? I I, I don't know. I think the Brewers, I, a team that I know they haven't won in the playoffs the last years, they keep blowing leads, but I don't know, man. I kind of like Milwaukee at that price. I mean, it's line. interesting because between all th- three of the four games are, are you know, um, I, I think inaccurately priced. I think Baltimore KC is probably the only one that's remained static. Like if you look at a regular three game series, right, unless you get a major starter, you know, a Cy Young level starter on the mound, the, the lines won't shift that much, maybe a little bit due to some just baseball regression. But Houston was a minus 140 favorite yesterday. They're up to minus 180 already this morning. Um, so there's a lot of money. And some of that is the fact that it's not, you know, Tariq Skubal going. Um, you, you mentioned the Mets, and even to a certain extent, the Padres, who I think were minus 190 by the time first pitch yesterday, just because Max Fried's on the mound, we're, we're taking 60 cents off that. that. That's a big jump for Max Fried, who hasn't exactly been like, you know, as good as Chris Sale has been this year. So um, I, I just don't, I, I, I think you're right. You should note those price changes and what they are, because sometimes they're indicative of uh, a, a, a mispricing by odds makers in the marketplace like in theory the Padres who who never looked at not in control yesterday wh- why would they be this short of a favorite yeah it's interesting to note there uh you talked about the Astros and the Tigers Mark that is going to be my half of the double play I like the under in this one here obviously not a lot of runs yesterday it was a 3-1 win are the Tigers going to be that team this postseason Mark that just leaves us scratching our heads saying, how is this team still playing baseball? Well, uh, manager A.J. Hinch has promised chaos for game two after Scooble gave him the great game one outing. It's going to be Tyler Holton, the Southpaw reliever, opening game two for the Tigers. And then it's going to be Reese Olsen, probably, and a whole lot of other guys for bulk innings. This is basically a bullpen game. Welcome to Major League Baseball in 2024. Uh, Hinch is going to uh, deploy that bullpen aggressively in this one. It is a high variance game. I trust Hinch though to manage the bullpen well. Uh, how about this uh, this prospect Jackson Job also as well? I know Trigg was tweeting about him. He follows this minor league stuff. He's at the Tigers' disposal now. Houston did not score till the ninth inning yesterday. They were scratching their heads. But luckily for the Astros, I like the fact that Hunter Brown's pitching. Framber was not the color of their energy yesterday. He just couldn't sure find the was. plate. In that sec- well, he couldn't find the plate in the second inning. And the problem okay. was, now hold on, hold on, hold on. Detroit was pretty lucky to get those three runs because they came all with two outs after yes. Houston failed to turn a double play. It looked yes. like an inning ender. The guy was safe at first, and then the dam broke for the three runs. Other than that, Detroit didn't do anything. And Hunter Brown, we have talked about Hunter Brown many times on this program before Mark Zeno. The first seven starts of the season, Brown was 0-4 with a 7.79 ERA. Things were not looking good. He finished the year with a 3.50 ERA. How good was this guy down the stretch? How about a 2.48 ERA his last 23 starts? Uh, The Tigers, I still have questions about their lineup. This is going to be another low-scoring game in Houston. So under mm. Tigers-Astros is my half of the play. And I will throw this question to you, sir. Home field advantage for these teams that are playing, that are stuck playing in the daytime of the wild card round, is that, a, is that something where they just lose it? Like it's kind of like a sleepy start in the daytime and maybe you don't play as well as normal when you're the better team? Is that what? Was going on with Houston yesterday, or or does this Tigers team have some voodoo? I I, I mean, I I don't believe in voodoo, but you know, again, some guys pitch better during the day. Like, here's the interesting part about Hunter Brown: 
right, for all the accolades you just mentioned. You know what his ERA is during the day? 5.9. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm in trouble. Um, I, I mean, you know, like, it, it's because pitchers are such creatures of habit and such creatures of routine, right? Like, when they get up, you know, when they get to the ballpark and they have their work on their off days, the work that they have to go through and everything else, and the same day on, when you start, you know, on a pitching day, and it's a night game. They get to the ballpark this time. They do their warm-up, stretch up. Back, all that stuff gets thrown off when they have to pitch during the day. Some of these guys just don't handle it well. Some guys really do. Some guys like it better. Some guys are early risers. They get out of bed. We're early risers. Look at us. We, we get out of bed early to do this show. We, we are very sprightly in the morning most days when I'm not on a 3-11 and 11 run. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I, I think some people perform. Yes, it's that bad. It is. Um, some guys perform better during the day, and, and I think that's some of it. Plus, you just the, the the crowd doesn't seem to have the same juice during the day. Mm-hmm. As it does. Here's San Diego last night. Like you could feel it through the TV. Mm. Like the way that the energy was in that building. It ain't that way at two thirty in the afternoon. I'll tell you, what, I bring the energy at two thirty after in the afternoon at the ballpark. But I guess the rest uh, of America uh, perhaps Rallyberger. does not follow Rally my lead. Rally burger. Rally burger. That's that? what they need in Houston. Just start eating rally burgers, guys. There, it uh, is. there you go. All right. Uh, before we get to our show best bet, despite Mark yeah. Zinno, uh, him, him putting himself down, you absolutely can head on over to his page right now. And for just $77, pick up a seven-day all-access. Mark is poo-pooing <laughs> himself. Just head on over I, to my page, then, if you don't want to head over to Mark's page. Either page. way, <laughs> right now, okay, no coupon code needed, seven-day all-access for $77. That gets you all the NFL all the college, all the MLB, all the soccer. I did an all-Champions League version of the Power Five this morning, Zinno. Can you believe that? I apologize to the fine people behind the scenes at Wager Talk and said if this bombs in the ratings, i.e. doesn't do a lot of views, it's my fault. Well, it bombs in the ratings because it's soccer and no one cares. You have yet to oh, figure this part out. Yeah. They care. Now, they also live in foreign countries, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so, yeah. And, oh, by the way, if you'd like to, you can go to wt.buzz slash mz and do the opposite because that's what you should do right now. Just do the opposite. Got any take on Dinamo Zagreb Monaco today in the Champions League? I have no idea what you just said. It wasn't even in English. Yes. WT.buzz. Just change that to do the opposite. WT.buzz slash MZ at the bottom there. There you go. Do the opposite. <laughs> All right. Show best bet time. I mentioned at the top of the show, okay, and let's, let's bring it full circle, Mark, Oh, that teams who fall listen. down – Teams that fall behind one nothing in the wild card round uh, have not done well. None of them have ever come back to erase that deficit. Seven of the eight have just been swept. Baltimore Orioles' history is against them. But we think if they are to force a game three today against Kansas City, it's going to be because of the starting pitching matchup. The bullpens, I talked about this yesterday, I think in this series are basically a wash. The Orioles' bullpen is a weakness. But they've got Eflin starting opposite Seth Lugo for the Royals. I don't. I think Seth Lugo is a guy who overperformed for most of the first half of the season. So our best bet, we're looking at Baltimore to get the job done early in the first five. Talk to the people, Mark Zinno. Well, let's start with Eflin, um, who since coming over from Tampa Bay to the Orioles, it's never allowed more than three runs in a start. And with the exception of this, the very last start of the season, he's gone at least five and two thirds in every start that he's made in a Baltimore Orioles uniform. So, uh, and some of that, again, was the Orioles already clinched. They knew what their position was. They knew they were wild card. So when he pitched last week, they weren't going to overwork him. Um, and, and he got out of there before five innings. That said, his three starts at Camden Yards, one of them was against the Blue Jays a team that he, he had not had a good track record this year against at all, uh, even when he was pitching with Tampa Bay. He gave up three runs there. His other starts, one run against the Red Sox, three runs against Tampa Bay, two runs against the Giants. He's been good at Camden Yards. He's been very good. The problem is that the Orioles have to just start hitting the damn ball. That's really what it boils down to. This is a guy in the year, in Eflin, who's had a 2-6-6 ERA in all his home starts. Um, you know, he, he's only had six walks at home this year, both between Tampa Bay and Baltimore. Uh, in 67 innings. So there's not going to be a lot of base runners on, on especially against a, a lineup that doesn't hit that well on the road. Uh, so I, I think Eflin is in a great spot here. The Orioles have to figure out a way to score. Their offense the last month of the season has been bad. They've been in a major slump. If they can't get three runs here, they're dead in the water. But I think we we, we can get three runs from them. 
Um, again, a, another sort of weird um, scenario here where the KC bullpen, which has been bad all year long, was great yesterday. And if they can do it again, they're probably going to win this thing. But uh, this is an Orioles bullpen that's, I'm sorry, a Royals bullpen rather. It's bottom 10 in ERA and bottom 10 in whip this year, bottom five or six in whip rather. Uh, and and the Orioles should be able to take advantage. But if they get blanked, of course they're dead. But we, we like the Orioles in the first five. You're muted, dummy. Unmute yourself. Hey, that's you know, yep. and I was I was just thinking to myself that I'd really done a good job today. I thought I screwed it all no. up down the home stretch. All right, Orioles first five lay in the half run is our show best bet. Uh, if you'd like my my personal best bet on the Major League Baseball playoffs for Wednesday, you can head over to my page right now. It is a four percent play. Also, oh. if you missed my five dollar play on Tuesday in the NFL. I'll be reposting that. It is on the Thursday night game, 8-2 and two with NFL sides so far this year. I believe that is 80%. Don't need to be a math major to know that. Uh, that will be available as well. Considerably better than what I've done. Considerably better. Is there anything you would like to share uh, before we bid the fine people to do here? Anything going on at your page? Other than telling you to go bleep yourself. No, I don't, I don't really care. When you what actually you get your, I actually, I actually, I actually get angry when you start pumping your record. I actually get angry. I, I thought about not doing it. I was laughing while you were doing the best bet breakdown. I was I was thinking about something like, you know, I've done pretty well on the show today. And I also yeah, haven't I pipped my record. So I was going to do that. And I was laughing so hard to myself. I forgot to unmute myself. Joe Ranieri, I mean, please. I, I, I promise you I'll be better tomorrow. I think it's safe to say that the Morning Wager audience knows that you're good at this. You don't need to remind them every day about how good you are. I know, I know you like, like to. Doing- I, I, I like doing it do. to annoy you now. I, I do I that. Know, like, I, mean, yeah. my, I wake <laughs> the first two things I wake up when I think about in the morning. Well, not maybe not the first two, but you know, uh, up there is upsetting Mark Zeno with both soccer talk and my record. That that <laughs> I, I often think of that within the first ten it's minutes like, of waking up. You can't get your record outed in one sentence. The second sentence is not needed. Eight won my last place. Come on. Come on. I need Patty Johnson. I've been so sloppy as of late. Slump Buster! <laughs> Google Mark Grace hits. All right. Like, comment, subscribe.